In the previous video, we talked extensively about the anatomy and physiology of the small intestine, and all we got into with the physiology is really that the small intestine releases some hormones in response to food, as in chyme, entering from the stomach, and we also talked about the small intestine performs lots and lots of chemical digestion and absorption. In this video, we're going to look at the chemical digestion, and then in the following video, talk a little bit more about the absorption. Really, the small intestine is very complicated. It's got a lot of pieces to it. These were the hormones. Now we can talk about the breakdown of nutrients in the small intestine. But before we do that, let's think about what's entering the small intestine from the stomach. Now remember, the stomach digests proteins with pepsin, which is an enzyme in the stomach. But it doesn't completely digest everything. Okay, It might digest some things, but we're still going to have uh, large peptides that are going to be entering the small intestine. We may even have some intact proteins. For example, the casein protein in milk is not digested very well in the stomach. Okay? Um, it actually is going to more or less enter the small intestine as an intact protein. Okay? Um, we're also going to have triglycerides, maybe some diglycerides, maybe even some monoglycerides, so not completely digested uh, lipids. We're going to have some starch polymers. Okay, So we're going to have some things that need to be degraded further. And so to do that, there's going to be a series of enzymes in the small intestine, and they're going to be divided into two classes. Those are pancreatic enzymes and brush border enzymes. The first class we're going to go over are actually what are called the brush border enzymes. Okay, and to do that, we need to talk about what the brush border is. So on the surface of the small intestine, so facing the lumen, on the microscopic level, we have these finger-like projections that are called microvilli. Okay? Uh, these finger-like projections drastically increase the surface area available for both chemical digestion and absorption. Okay? Remember that absorption is all about increasing that surface area. Right? So that's what these microvilli do. And these microvilli are on the surface of cells that we call absorptive cells, also called enterocytes. Okay? So in order to absorb the nutrients, these molecules like glucose would have to cross from the lumen into the enterocyte or absorptive cell and then cross through that into the blood. Right? However, they have to be digested first and this is partially going to be accomplished through enzymes of the brush border. Now to be a brush border enzyme, you have to be an enzyme embedded in the plasma membrane of these microvilli. Okay? So these are your microvilli and you see this enzyme, for example here, maltase, is embedded in the plasma membrane of the cell. Right? So this enzyme specifically is maltase. It is an enzyme that degrades the disaccharide maltose. And so maltose from the diet, if it comes over here, it's going to react with maltase, and maltase is going to convert the maltose into its constituent two glucoses, since maltose is two glucoses bound together. And so you're going to have a series of these enzymes, hundreds of, or if not thousands, of different enzymes in each of these microvilli that's going to be breaking down their constituent substrates, and then those substrates can then be absorbed. We're not going to really talk about the absorption here. Um, some of them have to be co-transported with other things like sodium ions, but the point is, is that these enzymes are going to exist in the plasma membrane of the microvilli. Okay? That's what constitutes a brush border enzyme. So these enzymes, which are brush border enzymes, are going to be naturally present in the small intestine because they're embedded in the membrane of those enterocytes. Okay? And if we're looking at these enzymes specifically, the ones that degrade carbohydrates are going to be dextrinase, glucoamylase, maltase, sucrase, and lactase. We'll look at specifics in a minute. And then for proteins, we're going to have aminopeptidase, carboxypolypeptidase, and dipeptidase. What you'll notice about brush border enzymes is that we really don't have any that degrade lipids. Those, in contrast, are going to be secreted by the pancreas. Right? So let's look at the various reactions of brush border enzymes, because these might be important to know for your course. So if we have the disaccharide sucrose, sucrose is a disaccharide of glucose and fructose. So the enzyme that degrades sucrose is aptly named sucrase, and it breaks sucrose down into glucose and fructose, and those can be absorbed. Maltose, is, as I mentioned, is a disaccharide of two glucoses. So maltose is degraded by maltase, into two glucose monomers. And then lactose is a disaccharide of glucose and galactose. 
there's an enzyme called lactase. In some literature, you may see it listed as beta-galactosidase, uh, but it's, in any case, lactase that degrades lactose into glucose and galactose. So these are disaccharidases, or enzymes that degrade disaccharides, that are in the brush border membrane. Now, these two enzymes, dextrinase and glucoamylase, are technically different in their mechanism, but for the purposes of anatomy and physiology, we're going to treat them as acting together. But in any case, what they're going to do is they're going to break off glucose monomers. Okay? So we see here this is four together. Now we have three together and one separate glucose. And so that's going to be the action of these dextrinases and glucoamylases. The starch polymers are far too large to absorb. We have to break them into glucose monomers, and then this glucose monomer could be absorbed. All right? And then, of course, we have various brush border proteases. We mentioned that those are aminopeptidase, carboxypeptidase, and dipeptidase. And collectively, what these enzymes are going to do is they're going to break a protein into smaller peptides or amino acids. So here, we have a peptide that is six amino acids long, and we might actually get a dipeptide out of this, a tripeptide, and a free amino acid. Again, large proteins cannot be absorbed across the wall of the small intestine, so we have to break them down. Now, we normally think of amino acids being what's absorbed, but I will mention this. Sometimes we can absorb dipeptides and even smaller tripeptides. Okay? Now, it is easier to absorb a free amino acid, but um, we can absorb these as well. Longer than a tripeptide, we're not going to be able to absorb that. Okay? But generally, amino acids and very small peptides like this can be absorbed. Right? But these are going to be the enzymes of the brush border. And just as a quick reminder, they are embedded in the plasma membrane of the enterocyte, or the absorptive cell, and specifically in the microvilli. Now, when we talk about pancreatic enzymes, these enzymes are not naturally present in the small intestine. Okay? So if you hadn't eaten a meal, you would never find these enzymes in the small intestine. Instead, they have to be secreted in response to some of these hormones. Remember that specifically secretin and cholecystokinin, these hormones, whenever chyme enters the stomach, it triggers the pancreas to release enzymes into the duodenum from their exocrine glands. Remember the pancreas is both an endocrine organ and an exocrine organ. In terms of its exocrine functions, it will squirt these enzymes into the duodenum and it will help digest uh, those nutrients. Now, the pancreatic enzymes come in three classes. We have ones that digest proteins, carbohydrates, and then lipids, right? And for proteins, we have mainly trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, and carboxypolypeptidase. There are others. For carbohydrates, we have pancreatic amylase. Notice the pancreatic is distinguish it from salivary amylase, which is in the mouth. And then for lipids, such as triglycerides, we have pancreatic lipase, again, to distinguish it from lingual lipase in the mouth. Let's look at the various reactions of these enzymes. So we have pancreatic lipases that are released from the pancreas, and they will degrade triglycerides into a diglyceride and free fatty acid. And then those diglycerides can be degraded further into a monoglyceride, another free fatty acid. And then the monoglycerides can be degraded further into glycerol, which is the backbone, and another free fatty acid. And ultimately, the goal of the pancreatic lipases is to split off all the free fatty acids from the triglyceride. Okay? Remember, a triglyceride has three fatty acids on it. So you can have three separate reactions on the glyceride in order to get off all of the fatty acids. And then the fatty acids along with the glycerol can be absorbed. But we're going to talk about that in a separate video because we're going to see it's actually quite complicated for lipids. Okay? Easy for amino acids and glucose and sugars, but complicated for lipids. As I mentioned before, we also have pancreatic amylase. So again, we'll have a starch polymer. We cannot absorb these starch polymers. They're too large. And so what this amylase does is it cleaves off glucose units, okay? And then the glucose units as monomers can be absorbed. And in terms of pancreatic proteases, we have several. Uh, those are going to be trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, and carboxypolypeptidase. What we see they're going to do is they're going to take this protein or peptide and they're going to break it into smaller pieces, just as we did with the brush border enzymes, okay? 
Um, again, we can't absorb larger proteins or peptides. They have to be either free amino acids like this one, a dipeptide, or maximum tripeptide. Any larger than that, there's really no hope of absorbing them. So really what you can hopefully see here in the small intestine, one of the functions that's very important is chemical digestion, right? Again, we're gonna have that partially through brush border enzymes, but also through enzymes that are gonna be secreted uh, by the pancreas. So we have this huge list of pancreatic enzymes. Now there is one note I want to be very clear about, and it really has to do with these first two enzymes that digest proteins from the pancreas. These are trypsinogen and chymotrypsinogen. Okay? When you see these enzymes written, you'll see it end in ogen. Okay? We see that also in chymotrypsinogen. Okay? These enzymes are secreted in inactive forms. When you see the suffix ogen on a protein, that means that it's inactive. Okay? It turns out through different mechanisms that we won't discuss here. Once these enzymes get secreted into the duodenum, they then become active, and so their active enzyme forms are just trypsin and chymotrypsin. If you see the ogen suffix, that means that they're currently inactive, but in any case, once they get secreted into the duodenum, they become activated very quickly. Okay? And the reason they're made in an inactive form is so they don't digest the proteins in the pancreas before they are secreted. Okay? Now the question I'm going to leave you with in this video that we'll actually answer in the next video is, how does the pancreas end up secreting these enzymes into the duodenum, the small intestine? Furthermore, does it only secrete enzymes or does it secrete other things? And then also, is there anything that the pancreas works with to secrete other stuff? And it turns out there's a lot of things that play into this. The pancreas releases enzymes, yes. It also releases bicarbonate. And then it works with the gallbladder slash liver to ultimately help get bile into the small intestine. So the next video is gonna be focused on the liver and extrahepatic anatomy and function, and then we'll also talk about lipid absorption because it turns out that's a lot more complicated than amino acid and glucose absorption. So hopefully this video made sense. Make sure to join us in the next video and we'll answer that question. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.